Good afternoon, this is NTN Nationwide and I'm Joseph Johnson. Glad you could join us. Far-reaching measures have been taken by the federal government towards ensuring that all the power generated through the various policy initiatives are injected into the national greed for distribution to consumers across the country. This followed the approval of a new policy framework for critical investment aimed at enhancing the capacity of the existing distribution networks by Federal Executive Council. The Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatunde Rajifashula, announced this while briefing journalists after the Council's meeting, presided over by President Muhammad Buhari. The process which will involve uh, international trending just for the procurement of the equipment the lines and all of the accessories that are necessary to build out those networks is to just uh, accelerate action to ensure that the 2,000 megawatt that is available now gets to the grid and gets to the people. Because more power is coming, we're expecting many more power plants to complete this year, which will add almost uh, about 1,600 more megawatt to the grid, uh, to the production this year. So we can't continue to accumulate power that is produced and doesn't get to people. So this framework gives us the authority now to start the process of uh, grid expansion, uh, distribution expansion and investment. In continuation of his genuine efforts at finding lasting solutions to the challenges of security in parts of the country, President Muhammad Buhari this Tuesday held a crucial meeting with the entire principal officers of the Senate. The meeting behind closed doors was a follow-up to the one earlier held on Sunday with the presiding officers of the National Assembly. The Senate President Bukala Saraki told newsmen after the meeting that fruitful discussions were held in the overall interest of the country. Just a follow-up, follow you know, you are, I was here with the speaker. First day of the session, and if you followed, we integrated into for for the whole day, from about close to almost about four hours. And some of the resolutions we took there was for me to personally come and brief the president on some of our, our resolution, particularly the issue of security. So I was just here to brief him on the debate and some of the conclusions we reached. How did you uh, receive it? Very well. We we'll hope that. Um, we begin to see results of some of the actions, bring uh, normalcy back to Benin. Not only Benin, but also other states too that we were seeing a high incidence of this kind of violence and, and killings. That there's need for us to address some of these issues and restore confidence back uh, to the people. The senior special advisor to the President on National Assembly matters, Senator Itaenang, appreciated the existing cooperation, understanding and collaboration between the President and the National Assembly, saying Nigeria will be better for it. With the greatest passion and statementship, they, they, they divorced every question of sentiment, any bias, any uh, political interest, party or otherwise, and they looked at Nigeria as one. And um, it, they also made sure that the passions, the passion as it were, were doused and uh, uh, respected. In the meantime, security issues once again topped deliberations on the floor of the Senate at Wednesday's plenary. National Assembly correspondent Ignesh Dennis Adegunloye reports that the recent murder of a member of the Taraba State House of Assembly sparked a lively discourse. 
of the State of Assembly in my state, who, for no fault of his, got killed because of a society that is overtaken by evil. A society where security has become a very serious problem. This conflict between farmers and nomadic cattle herdsmen is posing a grave danger to national security, harmonious communal life, and national unity. I don't accept that we stand here and condemn the administration is entirety. It's wrong. Suspend plenary by Wednesday and Thursday next week and hold the security summit under the leadership of the President of the Senate to enable us to have the two picture of what is happening all over the country and be able to hear other people in terms of the solutions and come up with immediate steps to hold these uh, killing, killings going on, going on all over the country. The interim report of the Committee on Petroleum Downstream investigating the fuel crisis across the country was also presented with terms of references put forward by the chairman of the committee, Senator Kabiru Marafa. Special foreign exchange concession to oil marketers to enable them to commence importation of fuel and sell at the approved 145 per litre. Two issues are very important. is the issue of the scarcity as of today and the fraud of the volumes. And, and, and that is really where the issue is. Because for as long as we are consuming 30 million, 27 million liters a day, and you are bringing 40 million liters a day, it's, 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 it's criminal. An executive communication from President Mohamed Buhari is also expected on implementation of the FCT Statutory Appropriation Act 2017. And the House of Representatives is to investigate alleged extra budgetary spending for the importation of petrol by the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC. Ignatius Sunko is here to give us highlights of that resolution. Well, that resolution came through a motion moved by Representative Karim Sunday, who argued that there is a difference between the landing cost of a uh, litre of petrol, that's between 171 Naira and 145 Naira, which is the pump price. And then he said that that price, that difference has been offset uh, outside the budgetary provision uh, approved by the National Assembly. And then he called on the House to investigate this, the, the, the payment of this difference. And then here with me is uh, Representative Ahmed Pataki from Kwara State. He is the Chairman House Committee on Water Resources. But once we are able to get NMPC to bring its budget to the National Assembly and we scrutinize it, Nigerians will for the first time know what NMPC is spending and it will put a stop to this extra budget spending that is taking place day in, year in, year out. Thank you very much for your time. Well, I still have with me the Chairman House Committee on Petroleum Downstream, Representative Joseph Akilaja. In fact, he's an expert uh, in, in the oil sector. He's here to tell us exactly what he feels that motion seeks to address. Well, from my experience, is supply that is the issue. If the major marketer, independent marketer, Dapman members and all the petroleum businessmen in Nigeria are not allowed to come into the importation, I do not think that NMPC alone importing in addition to very little local production can sustain can be sustained for a very long time without break in transmission. In other words, without the queues coming back to this. So it's issue of supply. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Well, uh, meanwhile, a member from your state, Representative Olusegun Odebomi, has defected from the People's Democratic Party, PDP, to the All Progressives Congress, APC, citing factions in PDP as his reasons for the defection. We'll bring you an update of what has transpired on the floor of the House of Representatives at Wednesday's plenary. Ignatius Nkwo reporting there. Still talking legislative matters, 2018 should be a year that the National Assembly should work towards ensuring that the impact of their work is felt by ordinary Nigerians. This was the opinion of guests on NTS Good Morning Nigeria program while discussing agenda for the National Assembly in 2018. Kunle Adeye reports.
The National Assembly resumed from its end of year recess at a time Nigeria is facing a series of security challenges and a slow economic recovery after exiting recession. With the 2018 budget waiting to be passed, among other very important bills, analysts on NTA's Good Morning Nigeria say it is a defining moment for the legislature to change the negative perception it has. What is important in legislature is impact. It is not the drama of making laws or making uh, or passing bills. We have to, what is the impact? The failure of oversight has something to do with some ethical issues that the National Assembly has not been able to deal with. National Assembly members on the panel, however, say they are not unaware of these perceptions, but the reality is that the institution has played the role expected of it, as it has on many occasions bailed the country out of the woods and have come up with interventions that have made significant impact in the country. We have resolved, as always, to be very, very sensitive to the yearnings and aspirations of those who sent us to the National Assembly. We really love to know how the public perceives us so that if there's anything we can do internally to correct it, we should. The discussants all agree that the National Assembly remains an important democratic institution whose actions and inactions determine the sources or otherwise of the country's democracy. In Abuja, Kunle Adeyeye, NTA News. You're watching NTA Nationwide. Ademola is in our Lagos studio with stories on fire incidents, DPR assessing exploded gas plants in Magudu, and development on railway projects. Ademola. Thank you, Joseph. Good afternoon and a, well, a warm welcome to Lagos. An oversight, an overnight inferno has destroyed goods worth millions of naira at Fijabi Ogolua Plank Market in Ajiromi, Feludu local government area of Lagos. Musa Toliat has the details. A sense of helplessness pervades the environment as residents and shop owners at Fijabi Ogolua Plank Market gathered to assess their losses after the inferno had been contained. We are sleeping there. We hear some noise at fire, fire, fire. Ah. Where this thing is happening, so everybody now rush out before we know that is our market here that is burning. Eyewitnesses say the timely intervention by officials of the Lagos State Fire Service and the State Emergency Management Agency helped prevent the spread of the fire to residential areas. They were able to, to attend or approach the issue with a, a, a quick and a better response. But they try to, to prevent all the side is uh, building of a thing like this you can see, the other one there, the other one here. So had it been there, not around, it would cash up many more buildings. Some, however, believe that the possibility of an electrical fault in the market may not be unconnected with the cause of the fire incident. When we keep on importing fake materials, this is what happens. Because if we really check all the materials they are using, all the wires, they are fixed. So anything can happen. Emergency responders, however, advise residents to keep simple firefighting equipment at home and in offices in case of fire outbreak. In Lagos, Musa Tolia, NTA News. The federal government says it will leave no stone unturned to ensure that December 2018 deadline set for the completion of the Lagos Ibadan standard gauge rail system is met. Minister of Transport Rutimi Amechi gave the hint after inspecting the ongoing standard gauge project in Lagos, Ogun and Oyo states. Musa Toliat again has the details. Minister of Transport Rutimi Amechi, who acknowledged progress made in the ongoing standard gauge railway project, said the need to assess and address impediments encountered by contractors on sites necessitated the inspection. Focus on construction from here. To yes, right now, right now we are focusing from here to Lagos. He stressed that the challenge of right of way after Ijoko, as well as water and gas pipeline obstructions, are being addressed. There's only one place after uh, after Ijoko that will have a problem with the right of way, and uh, it has to do with the fact that the villagers rejected the, uh, the compensation. We finished negotiation with them, and they have accepted the compensation. Uh, they will start clearing it this week. 
The transport minister, however, advised the contractors on site to expedite action on completion of civil works before the raining season sets in. The problem is actually the civil works. And you can't do civil works if uh, they don't give you the land. And we're not able to get the land because there are problems with, with utilities. We are rushing to make sure that we, we avoid, uh, we complete nearly all the civil works before the rainy season. Because if we don't, then you have to wait until after the rainy season. The minister expressed confidence that the three-year project could be completed in a year and six months if the contractors redouble their efforts and start laying the tracks earlier than scheduled. In Lagos, Musa Toliad, NTA News. The Department of Petroleum Resources, DPR, has promised to unravel the mystery behind the early hour gas explosion at Magodo area in Lagos on Monday. The Petroleum Resources, Modekaya Ladan, made the promise during an assessment visit to the scene of the incident. We'll bring you details in our subsequent bulletin. In appreciating the role of the Nigerian army towards tackling insurgency in the country, some children in Lagos under the ages of Vault Club have donated some toiletries and provisions to the Nigerian army. Amici Pius reports. I'm afraid that's all we can take from our Lagos network center there. Not from uh, Railway to Aviation, Minister of State for Aviation Hadi Sirika says the federal government uh, may be forced to terminate the contract for the construction of the terminal building at the Port Harcourt International Airport if not completed before the end of the first quarter of 2018. He was responding to questions from the members of the House Committee on Aviation when he appeared to defend the 2018 budget. Now, National Assembly Correspondent Abdullahi Aminu Hasmo. The members of the House Committee on Aviation made various observations on the implementation of the 2017 budget and 2018 proposal by the Aviation Ministry and its first status. Some of the observations include substandard contract of terminal buildings at some airports, poor condition of Port Harcourt International Airport, an international wing of the Inugu Airport, which is not ready for use nine years after the contract was awarded. Sometimes when projects are handed over to the government, you find out that they don't last. And so those are issues that we will work hand in hand with you to make sure that Nigerians get value for our money. Minister of State for Aviation Hadi Srika said the 2018 budget proposal will address some of the issues raised by the members. We must ensure that our airports and all the needed equipment necessary for safety and security are provided to meet the standards and recommended practices SAPS, of ICAO as outlined by regulatory aviation bodies internationally. The committee requested details of the 474 million naira for national career advisor in the proposal, status of the ongoing projects that are not contained in the budget estimate, and review of function of the Accident Investigation Bureau under the Ministry. From the National Assembly, Abdullahi Aminu, NTA News. The National Assembly has urged government at all levels and individuals to continue to support the Nigerian army in the fight against insurgency, especially in the northeast. This was during the oversight of the House Committee on Army to some military facilities in Maiduguri. National Assembly correspondent Kenneth Nanim reports. Containing insurgency, which has taken its toll on the people, especially in the northeast, has been a major challenge for the federal and state governments. State governments in the most affected areas had adopted various strategies in collaboration with the federal government to give support to the Nigerian army in the fight against insurgency. This worrisome situation, which placed a huge responsibility on the shoulders of the Nigerian army in protecting the territorial integrity of the nation, was part of the reasons for the visit by the House Committee on Army. To my degree, the members were also to ascertain the procurement of some military hardware and other facilities captured in the 2017 budget, as well as their utilization in combating insurgency. It's not everything that we are bound to see. For the benefit of the doubt, the ones that we can see, the ones we can verify, 
I think I will say that we are satisfied. Governor Kashim Shetima, who conducted the members round an ongoing school project for the enrollment of school uh, children who are victims of insurgency, urged the National Assembly to increase budget relocation to the Northeast Development Commission to further facilitate rehabilitation of the zone. I believe that we have crossed the Rubicon and we are on a path to sustain peace. For us to bring this madness to an end, we need a holistic approach encompassing the military, the political, and the economic solution. The committee also led reads in memory of the fallen heroes at the Malari Cantonment Cemetery. From Medugri, Kenneth Nanim, NTN News. Let's turn our attention to Taraba State now because the state government has charged security agencies to use all arsenals and bring to book the killers of members of a member of the state assembly, Hosea Ibi. The state governor, Darius Ishaku, and speaker of the state assembly gave the charge while lamenting over the killing of the state lawmaker. Joseph Orton reports. It was a solemn moment at the state executive chamber as members of the Taraba State House of Assembly held a special session with the state governor, Darius Dixon Ishako, over the death of member representing Takun Wan constituency in the State House of Assembly, Jose Ibi, the lawmaker who was kidnapped on the 30th of December 2017 in his hometown Takun, was found dead along Takun to Kashimbila Road 15 days after his adoption. Governor Darius Ishako condemned the killing, saying all efforts to ensure that he was released safe proved abortive as the kidnappers had shown that they had premeditated plans to kill him. I have warned people, don't go and attack anybody or any other tribe. This is not about tribe. This is about the Conveying the condolence of members of the State House of Assembly, the Speaker, Eber Peter Diak, taxed the security agencies to bring the perpetrators of the dastardly act and those who harbored them to book. Putting our political difference aside, we must make Taraba State an unsafe heaven for these criminals. The state governor later paid a condolence visit to the family of late Osai Ibe at his residence in Jalingo, where he appealed to the family to take solace in God who will surely punish the criminals. In Jalingo, Joseph Sound Oten, NTA News. Now, what is the situation on the reported outbreak of Lassa fever in Eboin State? You'll find out shortly if you stay with us. Hate speech is not a joke. It incites genocide and crimes against humanity. Most of Africa's civil wars are caused by hate speech from one tribe against another. We don't want it here. The Nigerian government stands firm against hate speech. Under no conditions whatsoever should we tolerate or excuse or justify hate speech or hateful conduct of any kind, especially where such is illegal. There's no doubt that the insurgent push for separatism, as well as the rising cases of ethnic and religious disharmony, are all traceable to the growing phenomenon of hate speech. One nation bound in freedom. Peace and you. Nigeria, one nation, one people. This is a public service announcement brought to you by NTA. Now, you can hold that dream occasion without stress. Horizon Caterers will provide answers to all your kitchen questions. Exquisite hall designs, mouth-watering and nourishing local and continental cuisine. Suitable for all types of ceremonies, including weddings, AGMs, business luncheon, cocktails. Name it, we can bring it. Our chefs and executive waiters 
give your guests that unforgettable experience in service. Our service covers all states of the Federation. Call us today to book your locations. 0805-502-9637-0803-450-9726-0909-9708-111 Horizon Caterers Experience Catering Beyond the Horizon Experience, they say, is the best teacher. They hold us from the sea. Thank God that we came back home. They should not go. That is because it's not. No, it's not good. It's, it's a very bad place. So they, they just may have us. Even now, sir, they are shooting the boat. They are going to used to go Italy. May they stop it. Our country is good. Our country is a blessed country. Now, now I know. Say I know our country is a blessed country. I didn't mean I know before. I for not travel from Nigeria to Libya. I know how much I spent. Let these personal experiences serve as a lesson to all who would repeat their mistakes. A word is enough for the wise. This is a public service announcement brought to you by NTA. Welcome back. You're watching NTA Nationwide with me, Joseph Johnson. Nigeria stands to gain more with patriotic citizens in building a better country with minimum rancor, crisis and youths who go in search of greener pasture illegally. Teletary Zirike reports that this was part of submissions of discussions on NTS current affairs program Tuesday Live. Nigeria for many years was a safe heaven where peace and tranquility reigned. But over time, kidnappings, insurgency, haters and farmers' clashes became issues that are affecting the socio-economic growth. I must reassure my fellow citizens the security of life and property is still top of our government's agenda. Language well understood and matched with action. We are always evolving means to counter various challenges. We have seen the great successes that have, uh, uh, have occurred in the Northeast. Boko Haram has been degraded completely. Pastoral and, uh, and the farmers' clashes are things that have been further amplified with uh, the introduction of weaponry. And I can assure you that is going to be addressed. We need a situation whereby there is a improvement in terms of investigative journalism and situating any story in its proper perspective and context and also localizing it. The law is no respect of, of any person. We must be nationalistic. We must believe in this country and we must believe that we have something to contribute. For many, thumbs up to the federal government efforts in tackling insecurity and advocate collective support and sincerity of purpose for sustainable peace. Let's have understanding. Let the media be fair to us. Understanding is what we need. These planets they are the same planets that they know 20, 30 years back. We are not troublemakers. We must identify ourselves as a brother in terms of everything that will solve our problem. It is quite obvious that concerns are high over issues that undermine Nigerians' reputation. Disturbing for many are stories of harsh treatment of Nigerian immigrants in Libya. I am so much happy that the Nigerian government uh, remembered the, uh, the immigrants. But what are the poor factors for illegal migration when Nigeria has all it takes for advancement? I got a call from a friend that they pay very well in Libya. Every month, 100,000, 150,000. <laughs> no, there is nothing else to go there for again. I'm not going back to Libya. Interestingly, they have a second chance as the returnees from Libya are trained on different skills and empowered with tools. This is a one in a million opportunity <clears throat> given to them on a platter of gold by Mr. President. Take advantage of it and make something good of your life. Stay back in Nigeria with hard work, determination and focus. You can make it here. Yes, you can. The general advice is for the citizenry to always keep in mind that Nigeria, good people, great nation, 
by doing what is right. Talati Ezerike, NTA News. Thank you, Talatu, and it's good to have you back on the beat. Right, a bit on health now. Two medical doctors and a nurse have reportedly lost their lives in the recent outbreak of Lassa fever at the Federal Teaching Hospital Abakalike. Chika Okoria, who visited the virology center where some other affected personnel are. We sorry, cannot bring that uh, report to you right about now. Let's uh, now move over to our Ibadan Network Center and change of button at Second Division of Nigerian Army Ibadan. Fatai in a, is our guide for more from that zone. Fatai, it's over to you. Thank you, Joseph, and it's good to have you with us in the cradle of Africa's television. That is Ibadan. A new general officer commanding two division, Nigerian Army, Ibadan, Major General Okudele Azinta, has formally taken over mantle of leadership of the division. Kemioshi summarized the exchange of baton. While taking over from Major General Abraham Chukunedum, who is now Deputy Chief of Defense Intelligence, Army Headquarters Abuja, the new general officer commanding two division Nigerian Army Ibadan, Major General Okudili Azinta, said the division is ever ready to support other divisions in combating security challenges across the country. Let you know that whatever is achieved by General Abraham is achieved because he worked as a team. And I want to let you know that here we will continue to work. The former GOC appreciated those he worked with, especially members of the public in the Southwest, for maintenance of peace throughout his tenure. He urged officers and men of the Nigerian Army to be prepared at all times to collectively solve security challenges in the country. I want to hear junior officers uh, try to dodge responsibilities when it comes. We have to always remember that we swore to go to wherever other guys land, sea, or air. From Ibadan, Kemioshi, NTA News. Moving on, Oyo State Government has received 11 indigents who are returnees from Libya with an advice to them to avail themselves of opportunities that are banned in Nigeria for self-actualization. Adebola Ogulano completes the story. The 11 returnees who were received by the deputy governor of Oyo State comprises of six females and five males. They said they embarked on the journey to Libya en route Europe to seek greener pastures. One of them, a graduate of accounting, said he paid the sum of 430,000 naira to a Nigerian woman who promised to take him to Europe. He said he traveled last year April and was jailed the following month in Libya. Deputy Governor for your state, Moses Adeyemo, advised them to seek means of productive engagement, also charged the parents to ensure that their children get additional entrepreneurial skills to enhance their self-reliance. Uh, my advice to the youth is that those of them who have got their certificates, you know, the certificate is just an avenue of learning something in addition to your academic qualification. Well, your state emergency management agency that has been charged by His Excellency the Governor to look at what can be done for those returnees and we'll work on it very quickly. The state government gave them financial aid to get them back to their homes. Reports say or your state is still expecting another aid from the last batch of returnee who arrived the country recently in Ibadan, Adebola, Ugulano, NCA News. And that's it from the cradle. It's back to you, Joseph, for more stories on Nationwide. 
for five from my Badon Network Center there. Now let's go back to our earlier story in which we told you that two medical doctors and a nurse have reportedly lost their lives in the recent outbreak of Lassa fever at the Federal Teaching Hospital Abakalike. Chika Okoria, who visited the virology center where some other uh, affected personnel are managed, reports that the situation is pathetic. When NCA News visited the Federal Teaching Hospital at Bakaliki, where the Virology Center is located, it was observed that the hitherto busy environment was a shadow of itself as patients deserted the premises for fear of being infected. Confirming the outbreak, the State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Daniel Omezurike, said out of 12 samples processed, four tested positive. We have lost uh, the doctor and a nurse. The second doctor uh, has a comorbidity, so it has not been confirmed whether it was Lassa fever. Dr. Umei Zurike said in conjunction with the Federal Ministry of Health, intervention commodities have been made available to the hospital while contact tracing and massive sensitization of the public are ongoing. We are also treating any affected person uh, free because um, Treatment is also very expensive, and, and uh, the doctors have also been sensitized to have high index of suspicion because part of the problem we had was late presentation. From investigation, it appears that there is a missing link at the virology center in the state, which is behind me, as death toll continues to increase in Abakaliki, Chika Okore, NTA News. Now, do stay with us here on NTN Nationwide as we take another short break. When we return, there are stories on Tussle for Kebi State Governorship seat and reaction to election timetable in Port Harcourt. Stay with us. NTA TV College Jaws, an affiliate of the prestigious Amadou Bello University, Zaria, is organizing a one-month short course on online news reporting. The course is scheduled for 5th February to 16th March 2018 at the NTA TV College premises, Refueled Jaws. The course for workshop is 100,000 Naira per participant, accommodation inclusive. This course will be targeting professional journalists and those wishing to pursue courses in this field. The course will be teaching participants the act of using mobile phone cameras and digital cameras to generate reports and how these news stories, photos and videos can be produced or even published straight from the field, making the news production process faster and more efficient. Take advantage of this opportunity. NTA TV College training you to be the best you want to be. For inquiries, contact the Academic Office on 0806 0816-956-1843. Does it mean you are in paid employment if you have a boyfriend or girlfriend? A boyfriend that cannot put his girlfriend on a weekly or monthly allowance. Is that one a boyfriend? It's a relationship, a job, and you must get paid. I'm going be needing like 20 to 25k. I transferred 15,000 naira for you some days ago. Your rib cracking comedy, <laughs> Professor John Bull, takes a detailed look at this trend in this episode titled Meal Tickets. In our days, we enjoyed Cutly love, not cupboard love. Exactly. Now you keep quiet, young man. An episode that comically explodes the myths and misconceptions surrounding relationships and defines the employers as well as the employees in this unusual job situation. <laughs> Over and out. Brought to you by Glow. The largest data network. Glow Unlimited. Thank you so much for inspiring greatness in me, Alaji. Alaji? <laughs> I am just rehearsing, dear. Rehearsing for what? A life changing and inspiring meeting. With who? Alahaji Aliko Dangote. <laughs> With the FG and I app and just 500 Naira. You stand a chance to meet one-on-one -on -one with Alhaji Aliko Dangote, Africa's richest man, and win cash prizes. As the Be Inspired meetings give Nigerians a chance to meet one-on-one -on -one with icons. To qualify for the draw, 
download FGNI app from Apple Store or Google Play Store. Go to the Be Inspired section and follow the instructions. Cost of travel and accommodation of all winners within Nigeria will be borne by the organizers. Terms and conditions apply. Proudly supported by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. Glad to have you back. Now let's join Abdullahi in our Kaduna Network Center for more on uh, Nationwide. Apologies, uh, we just have uh, just been told that we are heading to Port Harcourt for more on Nationwide. Hello Joseph, good afternoon and welcome to Port Harcourt. The release of the 2019 general election timetable, virtually a year ahead of the polls, is receiving positive commendation from stakeholders in Port Harcourt. Given that this will provide ample time for political parties to adequately prepare for the elections. However, concerns are equally high that the electoral umpire should also demonstrate commitment and should be seen as being poised to conducting a transparent election acceptable to all. Kingsley Amajuri reports. By the electoral timetable, political parties are to conduct their primaries from August 18th through October 7th, 2018, while the presidential and national assembly campaigns kick off November 18th. Governorship and state assembly campaigns follow suit by December 1, 2018. To keen observers of the unfolding political development, they are happy that INEC has started on a proactive note. What the political party should be doing from now, I think uh, politics have started. By now they should be able to start uh, doing uh, their in-house uh, nominations and, uh, you know, politics. But I'm afraid it will get bloodier. That's, that's the only fear I have. There is a redesign in our political strategy and our political development of this country. Whoever is a politician, and did not keep to that time too, but I want to say anything different based on its own. Some are equally calling for reforms that will see elections concluded six months before the handover dates, believing that within this time frame, contentious electoral outcome would have been resolved by the electoral tribunal. So some of them believe that, hey, let carry the ballot board, write the, write the result, let me be sworn in first, let him go to court, I will use government money and fight him. Being the first general elections to be conducted by the Yakubu Mahmoud led INEC, analysts believe that the commission has a big task before it to either make or mar its image in Port Harcourt, Kingsley Amajiri, NTA News. Under the guise of maintenance fees, some banks in the country allegedly rip off their customers with excessive charges in Nigeria, many of which are even taken twice. Robinson Dara today in this report examines the effects of this trend on bank customers and the effects and efforts put in place by regulatory authorities to checkmate the suspected financial exploitation. Alleged excessive bank charges have been a recurrent decima. Customers and regulatory authorities have been containing weight over the years in Nigeria. For instance, on February 28, 2016, the Central Bank of Nigeria announced that it has compelled banks to refund 6.2 billion excess charges to their customers in 2015 alone, while a whopping 44.8 billion naira excess charges was recovered between 2016 and 2017. Experts say banks capitalize on the ignorance of their customers to exploit them of their money. For instance, the automatic uh, teller machine charge of maintenance, they deduct 50 naira from your account without your knowing. For them to survive considering the harsh economic environment the banks find themselves, you have to talk about the TSA that have taken much of the funds from them. So for them to still be liquid and continue in business, it means that they must break even. Sometimes going to the bank, before even you know, um, the, the ATM is not even giving what it's supposed to give. There are different charges approved by the CBN, such as interest on deposit, as well as interest on loans, domiciliary account, correct account, savings account, and deposit held on collateral, among others. Charges on virtually all these accounts are negotiable. If somebody wants 100 billion, the, the, the terms can't be as the same as somebody that wants 1 billion. 
customers are advised to question miscellaneous charges of banks, regularly scrutinize bank statements, why CBN should ensure that the breaches are stopped. In Port Harcourt, Robinson De La Teide, NTA News. That's all from here. It's back to you, Joseph, for the rest of the news. Thank you very much indeed, Mina. The Prison Reform and Congestion Committee says it will do everything humanly possible to ensure that the mandate given to it is achieved. Chairman of the committee and Chief Judge of FCT, Ishak Bello, said this while discharging 368 inmates at Kano Central Prison. Mohamed Rabioli reports. The Stakeholders Committee on Prisons Reform and Deconjection was an assessment visit in Kano to review cases filed and payment of fines of inmates who have been convicted of minor offences. It was also a platform to access the infrastructural development going on at the prison service. At the central prison, the committee discharged 368 inmates across prisons in the state, courtesy of federal and Kano state governments. Chairman of the committee, Justice Ishaq Bello, decried over the delay of justice in the judicial system, assured of the committee's readiness to address it. It is our hope where we can, quite a lot of you will find yourself on your way to your respective homes. The Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abu Kamalami, says, about 70% of Nigerian prisons are contested. Hence the need to implement the Federal Executive Council's directive in for striking the decongestion of prisons. The committee was in Kaduna, in which uh, 207 people were uh, discharged from main prison in Kaduna, uh, 209 were discharged from a prison in Zaria, and uh, uh, we have succeeded in uh, working with the Kano state government to upset the fines of our 368 prisoners. The committee is expected to visit Kaduna and other prisons across the country. Mohamed Rabi Ali, NTA News. Now for more on prison inmates regaining freedom, let's join Abdullahi in our Kaduna Network Center. Abdullahi, let's get your own front on the Freedom Tales. Okay, Johnson, thanks for joining us here in Kaduna. Johnson, thanks for joining us here in Kaduna. The Presidential Committee they charged with the responsibility of decongestion Nigeria prisons, headed by Chief Judge of the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja Ishaq Bello, has released over 400 inmates with minor offenses in various prisons across Kaduna State. Muhammad Umar Ajingi reports. What will make in the process of dispensation of justice in the judicial system keep many inmates wallowing in prisons for donkey years following this ugly trend? A committee was set up by President Muhammad Buhari's administration to address some of these issues, especially prison congestion caused by a rapid increase in number of inmates on awaiting trial. The chairman of the committee, Justice Isaac Bello, alongside the Minister of Justice Abubakar Malemi, having thoroughly studied the case files of the inmates at Old Kaduna Convict Prison, Kafanchen, as well as Zaria, granted freedom to a total number of 450. 50 of them, comprising 207 from Kaduna Convict Prison, 209 in Zaria, and 34 in Kapanchen. Either death penalty or life imprisonment. On this, we had nothing to do. We can do nothing except to make recommendations to the respective state governors. On the instruction of Mr. President, out of compassion for human dignity and ensuring that justice is done to the inmates and looking into the condition of prison to ensure that adequate measures are put in place to ensure welfare of the prison inmates are in accordingly addressed to. Members of the committee earlier paid a visit to the state government house where they rob minds with Governor Nasur Ahmed Erufai on ways to make Nigerian prisons better. We strongly support that those that are detained beyond reasonable time should be let go unless they are involved in violent crimes and they are of an age that they remain threats to society. The inmates who gain their freedom are those with minor offenses and those unable to settle their fines. In Kaduna, I am Muhammad Umarajingi, 
NTA News. Governor Nasiru Ahmad Arafai of Kaduna State has sworn in new commissioners and heads of agencies to man the affairs of the affected ministries. Muhammad Umar Ajingi again reports. The newly appointed commissioners include Ibrahim Hamza, charged with the responsibility of running the affairs of Ministry of Water Resources, who Geoffrey Alkali was inaugurated as the Commissioner of Commerce, Industry and Tourism, Bilkimeri Luka, Commissioner of Fiscal Responsibility Commission. Other appointments comprises Managing Director, Kaduna State Media Corporation, with Ibrahim Ismail Ahmed as the head, Muhammad Magaji for Kadra, while Ben Kure was given the post of Managing Director, State Emergency Management Agency. Governor Nasru Ahmed Erufai charged the commissioners to be up and doing in discharging their responsibilities. We have one and a half, one and a half years of work. Okay? Whether or not the people of Kaduna said decide to give us a second term of office, we have a term now that is uncompleted. We have, we have one and a half years to get things done. There is no time to sleep. There is no time to waste. And we must all rise and do this. We still have vacancies in the government. And we are still looking for good people. The state government also reshuffled the cabinet, deploying commissioners to various ministries. In Kaduna, I am Muhammad Umarajinji, NTA News. And that report does it from here. Joseph, over to you. Thank you, Abdullahi. A bit on the judiciary now. Hearing in the suit seeking removal of the governorship of KB State, Abubakar Atiku Bagudu, has been stalled again at the Federal High Court in Abuja. Ali Utuku reports that this is due to the plaintiff's counsel removal of some names of its witnesses without informing the court. The suit, which has been ongoing since 2015, Due to jurisdictional matters, is alleging that the sitting governor of KB State, Abubakar Atiku Bagudu, made false declaration in the form he submitted to INEC. The case, which ought to resume hearing today, could not commence because the defense team, led by Yakubu Maikeu, made an oral application challenging the removal of some of the names of the plaintiff's witnesses without seeking the approval of the court. The defense team, in their submission, argued that the action of the plaintiff violates the rules of the court and that removing witness name can only be done by way of filing a motion or asking the permission of the judge. The plaintiff's counsel, Tochuku Maduka, in his reaction asked the court to dismiss the defense application for lack of merit. He added that the defense team is trying to delay hearing of the matter. In a ruling, Justice Ahmad Muhammad agreed with the defense that the plaintiff erred in law by not informing the court, which he said is against the court procedure. The judge further directed the plaintiff to file a motion in respect of his action. The case has been adjourned to the 29th of this month. So we never asked that the matter be declared incompetent. No, we want the matter to be heard. We want evidence to be heard in this matter. Meanwhile, Justice John Soho of the Federal High Court Abuja has ordered the Nigeria Police Force to immediately unseal the head office of the Peace Corps of Nigeria, as well as hand over the possession of the office to the organization. The court gave the order following a ruling on a motion on notice filed by the commandant of the corps, Dixon Ako. The court disagreed with counsel to the police, James Idachaba, who sought to dismiss the motion for lack of merit. The case has been adjourned to 7th of March. Aliu Tukur, NTA News. Now, the 2018 General Assembly of Tekken Church denomination, which convened in Akwanga of Nasarawa State, has urged Nigerians to continue to pray and sustain their faith in God for peace and development of the country. Tessio Mary reports. The Assembly of Tarer Ecclesio in Krista, Nigeria, Tekken, in Akwanga town, attracted participants from churches of various denominations to review progress and challenges affecting the denomination as well as lend voice on national concerns. So, sharing of the word of God and prayers for a peaceful and united Nigeria featured prominently. 
while urging Nigerians to support the policies and programs of the government, the Assembly urged appropriate authorities not to spare the perpetrators of crimes. The Assembly appreciates government's effort in ensuring peaceful coexistence among ethnic groups, urging it to strengthen welfare programs for the benefits of the people. Tessie Omeri, NTA News. And in sports, Golden Arrows of Nigeria are defeated in their first match at Africa Handball Championship as about 100 victims have spoken out on sexual abuse perpetrated by a former U.S. gymnastic coach. Amanzi Marcus has more on sports update. 